Hello, Rachel here. Welcome to my Slow TV Stitchery. Well, good morning everybody. Um, again, um, I've been up to all sorts of things, including a lot of stitching, but not on Time Mouth Priory. Um, I had a somewhat tortured time getting to grips with the stitch that I wanted to use for the stems on the little jacket and so when I started stitching it for real as it were I was terribly chuffed and put a picture on the Facebook group where I found the person who helped me with it and it's a very obscure stitch and there are a lot of people very interested in it which is of course lovely but it resulted in an awful lot more traffic and conversation than I was anticipating. Um, so, yes, lovely. Just confused. Looking at that, I want to create this cloudy effect. But I think So I am trying to embody this sort of cloudy effect a little more since I've worked out how to do it. And that of course carries its own requirements. And in particular I'm going to have to go back to the far end where I haven't worked it out yet. and add some stitching to create the the right effect
but I'm going to do that right at the end. Um, I do have to remember to put some C on here. Um, if you look at the pictures that I post at the beginning of each video, you will see that there is space on the fabric for, well, not the sea, the river, um, given where this is viewed from. And I do wish to include some river, although quite how, I'm not sure. Or quite what colour, I'm not sure either. something like a sort of steely blue grey perhaps maybe more grey than more blue than grey but because I'm looking for the cool northern skies look not at all like the painting I did a little while ago where the whole idea was blistering summer heat bright bright cobalt blue sky to say really hot bright And quite beside the adventure with the complicated Elizabethan stitch that I am using on the little jacket, there is another adventure on the horizon, and that is, I hope all things progressing well that next year I will be running a course in the watermill in Pizarra in Tuscany um, the idea is to talk about using ornamental stitches in for want of a better word, representational embroidery. So, something of the order of beyond long and short stitch and into, well, someone on Instagram recently said that something of mine looked impressionist painterly and I'm absolutely not a needle painter so I took that to mean um, something like um, well impressionist not too precise something which evokes an idea without dotting too many I's and crossing too many T's. It would be nice to think that that's what I'm achieving, since it's very much the sort of aim I have. And I have already started to work on ideas for um, what to do during the, this course and the first one 
I have started to show round and about. I spoke with the people at the water mill um, and embroidery is a new venture for them. They have had, they have knitters quite regularly. In fact, as well as knitting courses, they now run knitting retreats where basically um, they run it exactly as as if it were a course but there's no tutor and you take the project you want to work on and sit quietly and knit with like-minded knitters which actually sounds rather blissful if I were a knitter um, I can easily believe that um, this could be extended to other needle crafts but they have been developing the water mill for the last 30 years and there's only so much that you can do all at once. Um, and they, they only asked me to do it because they met me through a painting course that they ran. Um, so <coughs> they, they need a quilter and a patchworker and a few others and then actually there'd be no time for the painting so hmm. And I don't think people go to Tuscany in the winter. Um, up in the mountains I suspect it's quite wild and not at all what people pay for when they go to Italy. So if anyone ad fancies adventuring in stitch with me, it's next July and once you get yourself to Pisa Airport, the people at the water mill take care of everything else. the food's good. The food was very good. Very easy to end up drift and you would think wouldn't you that after wrangling 27 needles I think it got up to 27 with the Amana family a mere three would have been a doddle and That turns out not to be the case. Now, before I go cantering up I need to fill in those two compensation stitches. Oh. Oh. Hmm.
Really, it is very hard sometimes even to wrangle one needle. I was right, by the way, in fearing that the colour and thread I started with wouldn't do the whole sky. I hadn't started with it, but I'm not going to take it out.
That's all for this session. I hope you enjoyed following along. Happy stitching!